Hi there, welcome to Developing Skills with X in Problem Solving, also known as Introducing Algebra Part 5. Do you remember our approach to solving problems and puzzles from our earlier work? Let's see if you remember. Recognise this first step? Let's use a letter to stand for the missing value. Also, in one of the problems, we found it helpful to draw a diagram. Remember that one? The one with the farmer and the fence around his paddock. What do you think was the next step? Did you remember this one? We built a mathematical sentence or equation step by step to use all the given information. What did we do next? Here it is. We unpacked our present by reversing each of the steps in reverse order. So let's see if we can use these, uh, this approach to solve some problems. Well, here are your problems. There are six of them, and they are warm-up problems to we'll test your ability with our new method. So we start off with, I think of a number one, a fairly easy one there. And then what I'd like you to do is to have a go at all six of them. So you might like to pause the presentation now and uh, have a go at the problems. Now, you can't cheat. You need to use a mathematical sentence and uh, attack the problem with the method that we had a look at before. So we're going to let the missing value be x. We want to then build a mathematical sentence using all the given information. And then we're going to unpack our present by solving the mathematical sentence and doing all the operations in reverse order. So have some fun with this, and uh, then we'll have a look at the solutions. Well, here it is, the first one. Let's have a look at this one now. I think of a number. Hmm. Let the number be x. Or n. Or some other letter, if you like. Now, we're going to double it. So, let's double x, multiplying by 2. We're going to add 15. And then we're going to divide all of that answer by 5. And the final value we get, the final answer, will be 9. So there's our mathematical sentence. Let's see if we can use it to solve the puzzle. So here's x. It has been multiplied by 2, first of all. Then 15 has been added. And then we've divided by 5. So to unpack our present, we need to reverse each of those operations, reverse order. So let's multiply by 5. That will bring us back to 2x plus 15, and 9 times 5 is 45. And we will subtract the 15, bring us back to 2x, and 45 take 15 is 30. Let's then reverse the multiplication by 2, by dividing by 2. And if we do that, 30 divided by 2 is 15. Now let's state our answer, because they didn't ask us for x, we brought x in to solve the puzzle. So we need to state what they asked, and that is, find the number I thought of. So the number was 15 and we've solved the problem so there's our mathematical sentence and the solution so I want you to have a look at that and see how it compared to yours and let's move on then to the next solution here we are problem number two when Sue was born her mother was 25 years old that's important there 25 years old at the moment, the sum of their ages is 55. How old are they now? Hmm, a bit harder this one. So let's introduce, well, let's say n this time. Let Sue be n years old. Now, at this time, at the moment. 
Now, when she was born, her mother was 25 years old. So that means her mother will always be 25 years older than she is. So, mother is n plus 25 years now. And the sum of their ages, the sum, there's a key word, the sum means the addition. So let's add their ages up. Sue plus mother must come to 55. There are schools with X or with unknowns represented by letters. Here, they, here we're using N. Come into play here because there's an N plus an N. That gives us 2N plus 25 equals 55. Now to solve this, we're trying to find N. What's been done? It's been multiplied by 2 and 25 has been added. So let's reverse that now. Let's subtract 25 and we come back to 2N. And if we have 55, take 25, that would be 30. So we now divide by 2. N would be 30 divided by 2, 15. We now state our answer. Sue is 15 years old and her mother is 15 plus 25 is 40 years old. Problem solved. Have a look at that solution now and see how it compares to your mathematical sentence. We're trying to get nice neat sentences like this where the number of n's is always in front not behind the n and uh, it's set out in this sort of conventional way. So let's have a look at the next one. Here we are, problem number three. Hugh has a number of Facebook friends and his mate Joel has 50 less. He's got actually 50 less there. They have a total of 250. How many does each have? Well, if we start off with Hugh, we would say perhaps let Hugh have X friends and what's Joel going to have then? He has 50 less and so Joel has x take 50 friends and the total is 250 so let's add up there's Hughes plus Joel's must come to 250 let's tidy this up a bit x plus x is 2x take 50 has to come to 250 What's been done to x? It's been multiplied by 2, and 50 has been taken away. Let's now reverse that. Let's add 50, and we'll get back to 2x. If we add 50 to 250, it's 300. And then if we divide by 2, we'll have x is 300, divided by 2 is 150. So therefore, stating our answer now, q has 150 friends and Joel has 50 less which is 100 friends. Problem solved. How did you go? <laughs> Study that and see what you think and we'll move on to the next one. Here we are, getting a bit harder now. John's mother is twice his age, yeah, twice his age now. In three years' time, the sum hmm, of their ages will be 66. How old are they now? Let's start right at the beginning there. And with our usual method, John's mother is twice his age. So why don't we let John... Be x years old. So we've got to start now, 
Now, twice his age, there it is up there, so mother is 2x years old, twice John's age. Now, we have a bit of a problem here. We've got in three years' time. So let's write that down. In three years' time, how old will they be? Well, they'll each have three more years. So John will be x plus 3. And mother will be 2x plus 3. So we're gradually getting there. See what we're doing? Moving through the keywords in the problem and putting it into a mathematical sentence or form. One piece of given information after the other. So we're up to sum here now. So the sum means adding them up. So John plus his mother's age must come to 66. So we've actually now, in our mathematical sentence, incorporated all the given information. So let's see if we can solve it then. We've got x plus 2x is 3x. And then 3 plus 3 is 6 equals 66. So what's been done to x here? It's been times by 3. Then 6 has been added. So let's solve the problem now. Let's subtract 6. And 66 takes 6 is 60. Dividing by 3, x would be 20. So we've found x now, and we can say our answer. So what was x? John is 20 years old. And mother is 40 years old. Mother was twice John's age. So our problem has been solved. Getting a bit more difficult now. So see if you can stay with it and try to apply the same approach each time. Let's have a look at the next one. Here we are, number five. A rectangular garden. Hmm, that's important. It's going to be a rectangle. So it's a rectangular garden. Has a length which is five metres longer than its width. The total distance or the perimeter is 58. How long and wide is the garden? Hmm. I think this is another one where a diagram would help us. So let's draw a rectangle. There we have it. And perhaps now we say this one could be x, the width could be x meters. And then the length is 5 meters more. So it'd be x plus 5. It might be the easiest way. Now, when we have a problem like this, we don't actually have to write down let x be the width, necessarily. If you can display it on a diagram, that is sufficient. So here we have our situation if it's a rectangle. Can you check that out? The opposite sides are going to be equal. So an x there, x there, and x plus 5, and x plus 5. All right, so... Let's try and build the mathematical sentence. We've used all the given information. So the perimeter is the distance right around the outside. So it's x plus x plus 5 plus another x plus another x plus 5. And that should come to 58. Hmm, you might like to do that differently. For example, you might like to say, well... Really, if we start here and go around to here, it's halfway round, that would be x plus x plus 5, and we could multiply all that by 2, 2 times, 2 lots of that, and call it 58. So, well, well that would be 2 lots of x plus x here is 2x, plus 5, so 2 lots of that 
So this would be 4x's plus 2 5's would be 10. That's, that would be another way of looking at it. And of course if we did it this way, I want to just check, yes, it comes to the same thing. 4x's there, and a 5, and a 5 would be 10. So you might start to think about some of those little shortcuts that we might do. Let's find x, there it is, it's been times by 4, and 10 has been added. So let's solve the equation by subtracting 10, and 58 take 10 is 48. Then if we divide by 4, we get x is 12. So we're going well with our problem here. We must state the answer, because it said how long and wide is the garden. So the width we'll put first because that was x. The width is x metres, 12 metres. And the length is x plus 5, 12 plus 5, 17 metres. So there is our problem solved. OK, well let's look at the last one, which is a real challenging one, and see what we find there. Here we are, number six, the last one. I think of a number, triple it, take one, and my answer is ten more than double the number. Hmm. This is interesting. So we're going to have to triple the number. So what's the number? Uh, let the number be, what, have an N now? And we're going to triple it. So that's three times n, and then take one. And my answer equals, let's put equals there, my answer is, let's put that as equals, my answer is 10 more than double the number. Oh, what's double the number? That would be 2n, and it's got to be 10 more than that. 2n plus 10. Wow! That's the first time we have had n's on both sides in our mathematical sentence or equation. I wonder what we can do. Well, hmm. n means the same thing everywhere in a problem where you see it. So, if we were to take 2n away from both sides, let's see what would happen, 3n take 1, that was the side, and now if we take away 2n, and over here, if we take away 2n, we're going to get that situation, and 2n take 2n would leave no n's there, 3n take 2n, 3n take 2n, is 1n, take 1, it's left on this side, equals 10. So this turned out to be, up here, not a bad method of trying to get all the ends together, take, take the ones away from one side, and to keep the two sides equal, we have to do the same to the other. So now, we have a much simpler equation, when we've got n and we take 1, the answer is 10, so reverse the subtraction of 1, add 1, and we have the answer is n is 11. So the number is 11. Now that is an interesting problem and a little bit of a tricky one here, first time you've seen that. So I think what we need to do now in the next presentation is to look at working with n as if it's a number, doing all the things that we do with numbers. So we can build up our skills a bit and uh, then we'd be able to go on to even harder problem solving. So we see, see you in the next presentation where we're having a, a bit more fun with n as a number.